Hi there, and welcome everyone to um, this lunchtime webinar, um, which is all about learning and development for, pers uh, for personal assistance working uh, for people in receipt of direct payments. Um, my name is Richard Spate. I run um, DigiSkills Cymru, which is a Unison Wales Union Learning Fund project, um, working to develop the digital skills and digital literacies of the public service workforce in Wales. And, and we're joined today um, by Karen Fisher from um, Connecting Learners. Hello, Karen. Hiya. Hiya. And Karen is down in, in Swansea, and uh, she runs Connecting Learners, which is also a Unison Wales Union Learning Fund project. We're also very grateful and glad to be joined by Sharon Ledger um, from WEA Scotland, which is Workers' Education Association Scotland. And she uh, is working on a project um, for personal assistance in uh, Scotland. So, hi there, Sharon. Hi. Hi. Thanks for joining us today. So, um, this is how the hour is going to work. First of all, Karen's going to take us through a presentation, uh, which is, and she's going to talk to us about some of the learning and development needs that that um, personal assistants have. And uh, if you're watching us on um, YouTube. You can use the comments section below the video to to add any comments at any stage uh, of this broadcast, and you are also um, going to be invited to add uh, your um, learning development needs that you may have to a special uh, online notice board uh, halfway through. And then I'm going to take you into a, a, a resource called the Personal Assistance Online Guidebook, which is designed for personal assistance in Wales, but uh, we hope could be useful for personal assistance working across um, the different uh, nations and regions of the United Kingdom. So um, if we're going to start, um, I'll let Karen uh, take it away. Okay, thanks Richard. Uh, yeah, equally welcome to the uh, live participants today and those who will be viewing us later via uh, YouTube. Uh, this marks the end of Social Care Week in Wales this week, so we were very keen to sort of note that occasion and uh, thought it was quite fitting that we continue to engage with personal assistants uh, across Wales and, and across the wider country. Um, so, wondering really what, what it's all about today, um, why we've decided to produce this webinar and primarily to raise awareness of learning and development opportunities for personal assistants. I uh, particularly wanted to highlight resources and support available via Unison, uh, the Public Service Union, and later uh, during the presentation Richard is going to demonstrate a fantastic free online learning resource des designed especially for personal assistants. So I'll uh, hand back to Richard. He has briefly told you a little bit about his role, but he's going to tell you a little bit more detail um, about the digital uh, DigiSkills Camry project before handing back to me. Okay. Uh, thanks, Karen. Um, yeah, so as I said, I run DigiSkills Camry, where Unison's um, short uh, project just for one year to develop digital literacy learning um, across public services in Wales. Um, I have a learning technology and project management background, um, but had a, a really interesting experience last year working with um, direct payment support agencies, social services department, um, and social care experts in Torvine in South East Wales, um, around the Cumbran area, just inside Newport, uh, for those of you who are maybe not so familiar. Um, and so I learned a lot about, about personal assistance during that project. Um, so today, one thing I want to point you in the direction of is there's going to be some QR codes that you can scan. Now, if you're not familiar with the QR code, they're like a barcode. Uh, and you can get a reader for your smartphone or tablet. Now, we recommend a reader called Norton Snap, uh, which is from the internet security firm Norton. Uh, and we recommend that because it screens the websites that um, that are linked to QR codes. It's a really quick way of navigating to a web page without having to type in the address. Uh, quick, simple, and easy once you've got a reader like Norton Snap. So that's me, and I'll pass you back over to Karen. Okay, thanks, Richard. 
Uh, yes, Karen Fisher, that's me there before my recent haircut. Uh, I manage Unison's uh, Connecting Learners project in southwestern central Wales, uh, and this is one of three projects uh, of the Connecting Learners brand that's uh, managed by Unison. Uh, in terms of the, the funding stream itself, uh, we are funded by the Wales Union Learning Fund, uh, and that's a Welsh Government uh, funding stream which is basically a pot of money that's uh, tendered out to affiliates and non-affiliates, so like professional bodies as well, uh, under the umbrella of the Wales TUC. Uh, and the Wales TUC, as I say, is the umbrella body for all trade unions um, across Wales. Uh, the aim of the Connecting Learners projects is to widen participation in learning and uh, particularly uh, focusing on people working in a health and social care environment uh, and more recently people working in a school support uh, capacity. And the projects broker and signpost two activities encouraging people to take ownership of their personal development and generally building confidence and capacity to learn. Now, when Richard and I are on our travels, we're often asked, well, okay, what's this got to do with the trade union movement? Uh, so first of all, I'll, I'll dispel some myths. Um, it is a fact that Unison is one of the largest trade unions in the UK, with around about 1.3 million members. And we focus on people working in the delivery of public services. Uh, we used to be known as the public sector union, but that landscape has changed over the last few years, where uh, services were traditionally uh, delivered by people working in the local authorities and the health boards and this has changed more recently to encompass the third sector and not-for-profit organizations and charities as well so how public services have been delivered has changed. Um, first of all I wanted to dispel some myths again as we, we sort of travel around our areas we're often confronted with um, some statements and people are sometimes of the opinion that perhaps unions are there to cause trouble. Uh, we're only about calling strikes and, and industrial action and an unfortunate perception that unions are working against employers rather than with them. And when we talk to reps as well, um, again it's a common sort of issue that they feel that reps are only interested in getting people off when they're in trouble um, and that isn't necessarily the case. Um, what Unis aims to do is to maintain efficient public services and that concentrates on the rights of the people employed to deliver those services. We also support policy development, so working with the decision makers, the local authorities, the politicians, uh, and taking on board members' views and the views of the community to ensure where those uh, services are maintained. We will campaign on important issues, um, and most recently and more notably was the campaign for the living wage. But in addition to that, we will provide exclusive uh, member benefits, including our lifelong learning offer. This isn't a new thing for the trade union movement. Um, historically, we, we think back to the, the miners' unions, for example. Uh, they were deeply embedded in the communities through the miners' institutes, uh, providing learning opportunities for their members and the community. And the reason why we do it um, is because we have, uh, we feel a social responsibility uh, to build confidence in our members, to build their capacity to learn, to give them the opportunities to progress in the workplace if that's what they want to do, or to allow them to be the very best they can be in their preferred role. And also, as well, um, encouraging people through building their confidence, making them more aware of what's going on around them in the community, to become involved in, in issues that are happening in the community, so creating overall a stronger movement. Okay, so coming back to learning and development, uh, this is the current picture. And looking at some of those icons there, it, it isn't sort of very certain. 
Uh, both of our projects, both Richard and I, have tried over the last few years to establish the current picture in, in terms of training offered to personal assistants. It seems that some personal assistants have more opportunities than others. It's true to say that some local authorities and brokers are well organised and develop neat and uh, comprehensive packages of training. Some PAs and their employers may raise concerns about training. On the other hand, they may feel that they're too busy to learn. Employers may feel they prefer their PAs to work slowly, uh, solely rather on the immediate things that matter to them. And I'll use my aunt as an example there. Uh, Auntie Thelma is 96 and as sharp as sharp can be, uh, lives on her own but does require some support in terms of her personal care and requires somebody to come in to help her each morning to get dressed, uh, to get washed and also to provide meals for her and help her with her shopping. So is Auntie Thelma therefore concerned with, with training and development and, and, and possibly not. She is more concerned perhaps about the immediate things that matter to her. And it's also true of uh, some personal assistants as well. They feel that you know they're there to provide that particular service, to provide care for the person they support. And they may feel that taking on the additional responsibility of learning is, is difficult. Uh, PAs may also be confused about their responsibilities. They may not know where to start when sourcing a course or an activity. They may not even know what's required of them. However, uh, personal assistants are employees like any other employee. It's fair to say that some PAs may think of their job as being casual. They may work for a family member or for a friend, for example. And with this in mind, they may feel that their job is not as formal, perhaps, as some of the other care jobs, perhaps like working in a, a residential home, for example. Uh, some PAs may have another job, in which case their focus is on their main job, the one that brings in the primary wage. Yeah? They may feel that there's no need for in-depth training. But regardless of your position, the number of hours you work, who you work for, what you do as a PA is, in, is of vital importance because caring for others allows your employer, the person that you provide care for, to live the life they choose to lead. It allows them to be independent and experience life in a way that best suits them. It's true to say that not all employers feel the same. As I said, like, like my aunt, they may want their PAs to do the things that are Ooh. important to them. Personal care, help with shopping, uh, support to go out, uh, etc. They may not feel that training is important or relevant. Ooh. Sorry, can you hear my dog in the background here as well? He's joining the webinar. Um, it is important to remember that PAs have the same employment rights in law like any other formerly employed person. And the next slide just gives a summary of some of those rights that people can expect at work. So all PAs are entitled to a job description. They're entitled to a contract of employment which will be drawn up by the person that employs them, the service user. Also entitled to paid holidays and that includes maternity or paternity leave and also sick leave. As uh, recent legislation has enforced now that uh, we are entitled to be auto-enrolled into the workplace pension scheme, and I feel it like asterisks alongside that statement because that applies to people aged 22 or over and those who are paid over £182, I beg your pardon, £192 a week or £833 a month. Okay. So as a summary of the discussion so far, uh, we may, you may like to take part in an online quiz that Richard has prepared. Um, and this quiz has been lifted from the Personal Assistance Online Guidebook and those who are viewing the broadcast uh, live on YouTube or uh, who are watching it at a later date can scan the QR code on the bottom left of the screen or click on the hyperlink that Richard's included there. Don't worry, it's not a test. 
is just to get a flavour really of the current picture, yeah, where we are in terms of uh, knowing our rights and responsibilities at work. And I just wondered if Richard wanted to add anything to that at the moment. Oh, yeah, Karen, um, yeah. it's a note on the QR codes really, in order to mm -hmm. scan it, um, our viewers are going to have to be able to see the whole thing. Is it possible that you could move your cursor away from the next button? Yeah. So that, that, that little thing disappears. Hang on, let's go back. Does that work? Yeah. If you click on the screen, will that, yeah. anywhere on that screen, will it, oh, no, sorry. No, see it goes okay. forward. <laughs> navigate directly to the quiz. Um, yeah. And uh, and you can you can have a go. Sorry for chipping in there. That's no, fine. Sorry. No, that was really useful. Thanks, Richard. Okay. So what about training? Uh, your employer should be the first port to call for any training needs that you have. It is your res uh, employer's responsibility to arrange for you to be fully trained to do your job. Because this is a vague statement and roles and responsibilities may differ according to the service user's needs and of course the amount of hours that you may work. Uh, but in Wales we now have the Code of Professional Practice for Social Care which also highlights the Learner's Charter which suggests that we must be prepared to learn to ensure our work is driven by your voice and the choices of individuals who use services. Okay, and again, Richard may sort of chip in at this stage, um, and we're also going to invite Sharon to come in. So I, I think we're going to go back to Richard for this at this point. Yeah. Hi there, and hi there, Sharon. You can unmute yourself at this point if that if if that's good, um, if you can do that. So um, the discussion really here that we we'd like you to 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 have with us. Um, on, on the comment section on, on YouTube or um, and, and live here with, with Sharon is what do you think really to begin with what we think would happen if there was no training available from your perspective from your work in Scotland uh, Sharon what do you think on that if there was no training available for personal assistance? Well the danger if, if there's no training is that someone's doing a job with inadequate skills and knowledge. Yeah. I think which and as you're dealing with people that has huge potential impacts absolutely and when when we were working uh, with personal assistants last year um, the emphasis really was on um, actually people's abilities to do their job being really important for keeping people safe and making sure that the standard of care that they received was, was as high as it could be yeah um, and I think that really addresses, in some ways, the second point as well. Um, training is important. Um, one of the one of the things we wanted really just to discuss at this point as well is, from from your experience as well, what what kind of things get in the way of people learning and training in their role as a personal assistant? Um, the barriers we've come across are, you know, cost as as an issue, um, also time, so time away from work. Um, and quite often that is unpaid time, so if they choose to come in a training course that's then not paid for, so they have to make that commitment. Um, and just the availability of training as well, knowing where to get things, um, knowing who to ask for, and, and to an extent what's actually needed. Uh, the, you know, with Scotland certainly there's no regulations on becoming a PA, anyone can be a PA. Um, so someone who could be potentially working in a shop one week could the next week then take on a job as a personal assistant and there's no no minimum requirement to do that. There's no no driver then, there's no, um, no. immediate reason why somebody should go and get themselves a, a, a qualification or... or absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Other than being driven from the employer and obviously the employer then has to make that decision on um, whether they're going to pay for it or whether that's in their care package that they can allocate the money towards training. Um, yeah, so so there's, there's quite a few barriers but yeah, cost and time seem to be the most frequent and just the lack of knowledge of what is actually out there. Do you, I mean, Scotland has a, 
a, a similar breakdown in terms of the mix of urban and rural areas. We have, obviously I'm up here in Snowdonia at the moment, so we, we've got quite a large distance between populations here. You have the same in Highlands and... Yeah, and we are coming across that more and more as we sort of... I'm based in sort of Ayrshire, which is um, south of Glasgow, so we're fairly populated. Um, but yeah, as we're moving across the country and going into more rural areas, that has become an issue. So we are now investigating, obviously, this type of training as well, um, which has its own challenges because in the Highlands, especially, broadband's an issue. Um, so, so really, <laughs> we have rural broadband issues as well. And that that, that yeah. is a barrier to people accessing um, online learning. Absolutely. Hopefully, it's not too big a barrier for people accessing this this session today. Yeah. <laughs> but um, I mean, that, the best people in the world, you know, we we can tackle that. <laughs> um, no, absolutely. But um, but actually, the 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 people's access to information, whatever that information is, is 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 really important and and so actually that that the, those connectivity issues yeah. that prevent people being able to get online do have a, a knock on impact across different sectors and and this is why we have a, a comprehensive um, digital skills project in my in my project and why we try and work with so many different um, technologies to try and reach people yeah. um, and it's almost to provide that incentive for people to to want more uh, and yeah. better broadband um, and, and it was certainly the one of the um, factors that uh, that led to us to, to create the online guidebook which was what we're going to talk about um, yeah. later on and um, so now we'd like to invite you um, our viewers and Sharon as well um, uh, Sharon you can put yourself in the, in the place of a personal assistant yeah. um, and if if people can navigate to um, uh, the the web address that you can see on your screen, which is bit.ly/pa in capital letters, and then needs in lowercase letters, the capitals and lowercase are really important here. Or could um, just swap that again, yeah. Scan the uh, scan the the, the 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 code that we can see on the screen. Um, I'm going to take you to wh where that web page is, and it's an Online, um, an online notice board. Well, it's quite a nice Ooh, little uh, tool that we can use. Absolutely. Um, I've got to do my screen share thing here now. Yeah. Uh, switch to the right, uh, the right page. So um, this is uh, the web page that you'll be taken to if you follow that link or scan the code that was on your screen. Um, it's using a tool called Padlet, um, and if you double click, uh, if you're on a computer or tap, if you're on a tablet, anywhere on the wall, you'll create a little note, um, and then you can type any needs you may have um, onto the wall and, and click away from it, and it's added, and then you can move it around, and if other people have added uh, their their thoughts and you want to group them together, you can do that. Um, so we'll be monitoring this over the next uh, couple of weeks as this uh, recording goes, hopefully around the internet and and reaches uh, as many personal assistants as as we can. Um, so I'm not going to dwell on this very long, but this is a good way of, of us capturing your needs in a, in a digital way, and this should work on on any device and any. Web um, so I'm going to. Oh, we have a we have a note. Um, first aid. We have somebody watching uh, who's who's added first aid as a, as a learning need, learning and training need for uh, personal assistance. Um, which is, a, which is a great one. Um, certainly accessing that kind of training uh, for, for personal assistance is, um, is really important. And another note has come up. Oh, this is really exciting. <laughs> and unexpected. This is great. <laughs> Moving and handling, first aid. This is um, not me, by the way. This is not you. Fantastic. No, no, it's not me. <laughs> we, have somebody, we have somebody viewing who's, who's going who's 
contributing and making our um, making our webinar work. So that's <laughs> fantastic. So moving and uh, enhan- moving and assisting at first aid really important. I will. Um, I'll actually at this point say our personal assistance online guidebook that we're going to show later on um, doesn't provide um, direct training on how to um, use proper moving and handling techniques and assisting people with techniques um, because that is something really that you can only learn in a classroom and and, and be uh, able to be uh, trained properly on. What we do do though is we give lots of tips on what not to do. Um, so people can recognize if they are uh, using unsafe te- techniques, there are resources um, and videos on that, on the, on the guidebook that, um, that really do uh, show some of the things you shouldn't be doing that are maybe putting yourself or the person that you're supporting uh, at, at risk of, of, of injury. Um, another need added, palliative care. Mm. Um, which is re- really interesting. I think we've, as part of the of the guide, but we did look at um, dementia in particular. But palliative care, um, as a as a separate um, area, is something where um, I think we could we could probably add some more materials in. Um, I don't know, uh, Karen or Sharon, if you are aware of any um, training available out there for. Uh, personal assistance in either in Wales or Scotland related to palliative care? Uh, we've we've done some workshops on palliative care. Um, we've done a couple. We had um, CHAS, which is the Children's Hospice in Scotland, run a workshop for us. And we've also had an ex-social um, care manager who is developing a palliative care workshop who, who's done an introduction. So it's something that um, that that was me that added that, but it's something that our PAs have been asking for, uh, as they are coming across it more and more, um, and they just want to know what their responsibilities are really. And so it's not necessarily always about the actual physical act of the care, but it's surrounding that and how it might affect themselves, the, the person they're looking after, the person's family and, and kind of having sort of bigger conversations really. Oh, that's really that's really interesting. Yeah. That's, a, that's a need that we've got here, captured here and, and that you've, you've found as well. Um, and a, lot of, a lot of the training and development for um, personal assistance are just around knowing, where, knowing about something that the person they're caring for may be experiencing in their wider health and, and well-being. Yeah. And 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 knowing where to go to find out about it, and um, learning more about it, so that they're more knowledgeable and more able to support the the person effectively. Um, so, thank you for whoever has been adding um, uh, the the items to our wall. It's very exciting seeing it coming up live, uh, and I hope for those watching the recording that you that you can see um, how Padlet is working uh, for. Uh, for this webinar and how maybe it could be used in your work as well. So um, I'm going to switch back. Sure. Um, you've now seen my notes for my later um, <laughs> my, my later section. So uh, that's a little prelude to that. I've got rid of my uh, screen share now, and hopefully um, Karen will be able. I'm to coming back. Come back. Who's that? Yeah, you're back. Uh, yeah, great, good. That's uh, really helpful. Thanks, Richard. Uh, yeah, just picking up on that point about palliative care, it, it is something that we've run through the Connecting Learners project in South Wales, uh, not uh, specifically with personal assistance, but we have done some work with um, the wider care sector. And we've worked with an organisation called the uh, Paul Satori Foundation, which is based in Pembrokeshire. And um, Paul Satori was an ordained Anglican priest who uh, unfortunately died of a terminal illness. And the foundation was set up in his name. And part of the uh, services, if you like, is to provide training for uh, organisations. So uh, yes, it's, it's something that's been sort of very well received. And uh, feedback on 
that particular session has been really good. So um, if there are people listening in South Wales, that is something that we can help with. Okay, so picking up the discussion again then, um, what would be the worst case scenario, if you like, if, if there were no training opportunities available? Now, this is in no way scaremongering. But it is a fact to say that the 2011 Panorama report exposed the physical and psychological abuse suffered by people with learning disabilities and challenging behaviour at the Winterbourne View Private Hospital in Gloucestershire. Uh, subsequent reports arising from this and, and the investigations that followed transformed the way in which care was delivered and as such new safeguarding measures and legislation manifested as a result. Now what happened at Winterbourne was extreme and it's fair to say that much of what happened was down to the organisation's culture rather than solely down to a lack of training. Social care provides an important role in helping people with care and support needs to live full lives free from abuse and neglect. And this includes preventing abuse, minimising risk without taking control away from individuals and responding proportionately if abuse or neglect has occurred. And the local authorities, the care providers, health services, housing providers and the criminal justice agencies are all important safeguarding partners. Now that's the, that's the big picture, yeah? But in terms of what happens on a day-to-day -day basis, uh, as PA is involved in some significant work uh, and that includes administration of medication so worst case scenario there could be a medication handling error where we might inadvertently overdose the person that we're supporting or uh, may give them a substance that they're allergic to uh, manual handling throughout the day so that's assistive pieces like hoists or general lifting if we're helping with shopping or adjusting furniture. Uh, there's the preparation and serving of food, so food hygiene vitally important, uh, which links nicely to infection control, so hand washing, that sort of thing, disposal of um, items. Uh, the one in the middle at the bottom there, the wet floor, yes, yeah. so if we're involved in personal care, making sure that surfaces are free from hazard um, and things like that. And also, and most importantly, that the dignity and respect of the people that we support. Now, some of the more values-based topics may come naturally to somebody working in care, that, that's why you do it, yes. However, areas such as manual handling, health and safety, etc., might be better managed through appropriate training. Hmm. Okay, so this is all very interesting. So, so where do we start? Um, Sharon has already identified some of the barriers that might prevent us from full training and developing. So the first place might be to start with a conversation with the employer themselves and perhaps having a conversation, working together and discussing the daily routine and requirements and thinking about how each area might be better managed through training. What sort of training you might need to help you perform the best way you possibly can. And you may want to draw up a list of topics. So having arrived at some basic training needs, some areas that you might like to enhance or develop in, you may also need to consider, how do I learn best? How much do I need to know? Will a basic overview be enough? Or is this something that I need to study in greater detail? Can I do this by reading an article or by reading a book? Or would it be better, perhaps, if I trained at a workshop or at a, a, a training course? Think about how you would like to learn. Some people like attending the traditional type of workshops. They, they enjoy the face-to-face -face discussion. They like the interaction with the other, uh, other students. They don't mind the commitment of homework. Others prefer to learn alone. And this may uh, mean reading a book or an article. Or for those, like my friend Richard here, who have fantastically proficient IC skills, that might mean joining an online course or being involved in a webinar like today. 
some people may benefit from a mentoring approach and that might mean linking up with an experienced personal assistant and asking if you could shadow or observe them at work or perhaps having a discussion with them about some of the pitfalls they may have encountered or some of the ways that they've um, solved problems. The important thing to remember is that we're all different. There is so much more we can talk about in terms of learning and development, and especially how we learn and the, our learning preferences. Another time, maybe, eh? But in the meantime, be aware of how you may prefer to learn and be open to ideas outside the traditional routes of learning. To support you in your learning journey, uh, Unison has produced a number of resources that support personal assistance. And these are at quite an early stage. Uh, they under development at the moment, and to be honest, they're only as good as the people who use them. Uh, there is the online platform, and Richard has kindly um, included the hyperlink at the bottom there, as well as the QR code that will take you directly to the web page. Um, and there's also a, a Facebook group of the same name. And both platforms serve the same purpose, uh, the aim being to for you to share experiences and challenges. And through discussion and support from Unison as a trade union, many of the issues you may encounter at work can be overcome. Now that's all from me from this stage, and I'm going to hand you back to Richard now, who's going to give you a tour of another um, excellent resource that's been produced by his project, which will support you in your role as, as personal assistant. Thanks, Karen. Um, well, before I do that, actually, um, I'd like to uh, invite Sharon again to, to share with us um, the experiences from Scotland. Um, Sharon, you are you you are on our screen as PA Network. Is that could you tell us a little bit about um, the work that you're doing in Scotland and, and what the WEA's involvement is? Yeah, certainly. Um, well, WEA have a number of projects in Scotland, and, and this is uh, just one of them. So it's the Personal Assistance Network Scotland, and we are a Scottish government-funded project initially for three years. Um, basically designed to try and provide a support network to personal assistants. Um, it was recognised that personal assistants are quite often working in isolation um, with little or no interaction with other colleagues or the kind of traditional employer sort of interaction that you would have if you worked in a, in a sort of regular job. <laughs> Um, so we're really there to provide support for them and that can, support can be anything from peer support, uh, so we encourage that a lot so they can actually meet and engage with other people working in the same industries. Um, we try and provide any training that we can do, uh, we develop training and resources um, to, through to just really informal sort of coffee and chat sessions which quite often is is all that's needed. Sometimes it is just coming away and having an hour to sit and have a cup of tea with someone else who's doing the same job. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's what we're doing. We're kind of slowly working through Scotland trying to get more PAs engaged with us. And the end of the project really is 2018 currently. And the hope is that there'll be a steering committee of PAs who will be so engaged that they will then sort of take over the kind of the running of it. Um, so that's that's the steering committee is in very early infancy. Um, mm -hmm. So that's something we're working on now. But yeah, that's a kind of general overview of where, where we are. Great. Sounds like there's a lot going on and it's quite mm. a comprehensive approach, quite a multi faceted approach. Uh, we're, we're trying. I mean, we do have a website and it's got an online forum and stuff. It's, it's very limited use just now. It's been the forum has been up and running for a few months um, as a closed forum, so we are quite careful about, you know, not making information available mm. to all and sundry, just purely because of the kind of nature of the work we're doing. Um, but yeah, there's an online presence. We use social media. We try and do face-to-face -face meetings as often as we can, um, and then provide training and support and 
point people in the right direction if need be. Um, just really provide a kind of service where they can come to us and ask for advice and help. Wonderful. It, 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 it does sound like something that um, would be would be excellent everywhere in the in the in mm. nations and regions of the UK. Yeah. So um, yeah, um, I think it's it's certainly something that I, I'm hosted by the WEA Cymru yeah. um, myself, and uh, something that <laughs> I might well talk to colleagues about, um, seeing if there's ways and means of at least replicating some of what you do. Um, yeah. And in in Wales as well, and and we can keep sharing. I mean, I think the Scottish government recognised that there are lots of agencies that they are helping, mm. and you know, projects similar to us that are supporting the personal assistant employers. Mm -hmm. but there is no one else currently who's solely doing the supporting the personal assistants. Mm. Yeah. I think that kind of echoes what's happening. You in Wales, Richard, isn't it? We, we've had similar sort of experiences. As you say, the, the support is geared towards the, the service user themselves right. um, and very little then on offer for the PAs, you know. Well, and that leads us really very nicely. Well, <laughs> this wasn't the way we rehearsed. <laughs> it is like we've rehearsed. Um, you would think. <laughs> The personal assistance online guidebook. Thank you, Sharon, for that overview. It was really interesting. Mm. Um, so, the personal assistance online guidebook. Uh, you should be able to see on your screen uh, a slide from our presentation, mm -hmm. which uh, you can navigate to the guidebook itself. Uh, if, you, if you're watching us um, on the recording or live, you can watch, uh, go and navigate through yourself. But I'm going to take you on a web tour of the personal assistance online guidebook uh, for Wales. Um, it's available in English and uh, in Welsh as well. Uh, so there's a version, uh, version Cymraeg, uh, available for, for for people whose first language is Welsh, uh, and that's very important for us. Um, I'll, I will show you that, um, but we had uh, professional translators um, and Welsh speakers uh, involved in the production of that resource. Uh, so I'm going to take you to the resource itself and tell you about it. That's the wrong page, that's the right one. Okay. Um, so when you navigate to the website, you'll see it's called the Personal Assistance Online Guide, but, but for people who are employed to support uh, those in receipt of direct payments. Um, and our first introductory page is, is an about section. I can just tell you um, a little bit about uh, the partnership involved in this. Um, so uh, this resource was, was created and funded by Unison's um, DigiSkills Cymru and um, Connecting Learners projects. Um, uh, that was Karen and I in the lead uh, for that. Um, but we worked very closely in partnership and indeed it was a, an initiative kicked off by Tolvine County Borough Council um, down uh, Cumbran, um, um, Pontypool, other main in towns in, in, in Tolvine, down on the border, um, and their colleagues in uh, an, a charity that supports uh, people with disabilities um, called Services for Independent Living, based in Hereford, but they cover uh, Tolvine as well. Um, and what we did is we sat down with um, Tolvine and SIL and asked them about the learning and development needs of personal assistance and lots of the same themes came out that we were talking about um, uh, all through the, the, the webinar in particular we talked about the barriers that uh, many of which Sharon identified um, herself earlier um, one of the one of my key aims as a, as a as a learning technologist as, a, as somebody interested in design and designing um, learning experiences and resources that, that meet specific needs of specific groups of public service workers um, was to make sure that the whatever we produced, whether it was a course um, or an e-learning course, which was the initial idea, was going to be easily accessible for people in their workplaces. And the workplaces of personal assistance are the homes of the people that they support. Um, which led us to thinking about using mobile devices, whether people should be should need to log into a system or whether a resource should be freely available. And if a resource was going to be freely available, 
how you build that um, and how you make sure that it's really valuable and a really high quality resource. So what we did was employ um, an expert, Dr. Neil Thompson from Avenue Media Solutions. He's a, a, a well-renowned um, social work and social care lecturer and professional in his own right, uh, who wrote uh, with with Torvine, with SIL, with uh, ourselves, wrote the content of this resource. Um, WA Cymru, um, WA YMCA Cymru as we are now, um, also helped in the production of the, the materials, they offered the support, the technical support, I, I, I'm hosted there, but also with um, the Welsh language version of the resource, Bithig William uh, from the Bangor office, uh, kindly volunteered her time to voice over our videos in, in Aaron if you would like to turn off the microphone that would probably mean your doggy <laughs> Aaron I'll try and mute your microphone for you in this end mute the dog <laughs> uh, would you, I, I can mute you okay yeah. I'll do okay. that now um, Yeah, so I hope you're all still hearing me, um, and you're all seeing, still seeing my screen share. So um, I'm going to take you through uh, first of all how how we um, uh, how we designed the tool itself. Um, we went into it with a, a core design approach where we collected the, the the views and the input and the expertise of everyone involved. We had occupational therapists. Uh, we had social work practitioners, um, and crucially, um, we we had uh, the support of SIL. So we got the input from personal assistants and their employers as well into what was needed. And from that, we produced a resource um, that included a mix of uh, third-party materials, videos, um, audio. Um, and uh, PDFs and uh, other kinds of multimedia resources that were already available online and incorporated them into our resource. Um, but we also produced some new video content that was highly relevant and particular to social care and personal assistance in Wales. Um, I worked on developing this website myself. Um, I, I put the website together. Um, initially, we designed it on a platform called Peer-to-Peer uh, -peer University, but then we moved it over to uh, a Google blog site. So this this is built from um, Blogger, uh, from Google's um, blogging tool, uh, which provided a, a cost-free way of us hosting all of this material in a very interactive way. Um, since its launch, we've had 4,100 individual views of the, the resource itself, so it, it, it is being used, it's been used by personal assistants, it's been supported by um, uh, uh, local authorities, um, disability support organisations, um, up and down um, Wales, and, and having it available bilingually obviously was a very important part of making sure it could be adopted across the board um, and by people in all parts uh, of Wales regardless of their, 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 their language preferences. Um, so the, 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 the resource itself is, is broken down into chapters, including an introductory chapter and, and what it's all about, um, which is, is really looking at the fundamentals of social, uh, of social care and of the role of the personal assistant in particular. Um, we then have chapter two, which is making sense of disability, which goes into the idea of disability and of equalities and diversity in particular. Um, chapter three focuses on protection from abuse, which is protection of, of um, the person uh, who you're supporting as a personal assistant, protecting them from abuse, but also from yourself. Chapter four looks at um, health and safety. It's called Better Safe Than Sorry. Um, it, Again, as, as I explained earlier, um, this focuses on more on what not to do than on what to do. This was really the guide we got from the occupational therapist on our design team, um, was that there are resources out there to say what's a dangerous um, technique. But when we train people on the right techniques, that needs to be done face to face, and therefore it wouldn't be appropriate for us to try and supp supplement or, or even um, duplicate what really should be done better. 
uh, in the classroom. We then looked at, uh, there's a chapter called What's Next, which um, looks at where you take your learning and development um, uh, to con continuously improve your skills, but also looks at issues such as self-care, which is very important for um, personal assistance. We then have uh, three additional sections. Um, your rights at work, which is uh, looking at the rights as an employee that um, a personal assistant has and has uh, lots of resources there to keep yourself um, uh, safe online, uh, safe uh, in the workplace, keep you, make sure your rights are um, available to you and that you get things like um, pension entitlements um, and uh, contracts of employment and redundancy and the sick pay and um, holiday pay that you are currently entitled to. Um, there's also a, a guide to further learning, and that's really important, and I'm going to focus on that towards the end of this web tour. But first of all, I'm going to show you chapter two, Making Sense of Disability. Now, each of the chapters is broken down into um, different sections. There are, it's, it's over two pages, um, just so people aren't constantly scrolling and getting lost. Uh, each chapter starts with, in a nutshell, which kind of outlines what the chapter is about, before going on to look at the basics, and, and is usually is accompanied by an original video uh, produced by myself and uh, Dr. Neil Thompson, who, who produced the content and uh, voices them over. So I'm going to give you a, a two-minute um, snippet of um, Dr. Thompson on equality and diversity, so you can see the videos in action. In this video, we're going to be looking at two important ideas, equality and diversity. There is equality, and linked to that, very importantly, is the idea of diversity. Now, what do these mean? Let's have a look, first of all, at equality. First thing to emphasize is that it's about equal fairness, not sameness. In its everyday sense, equality is used to mean sameness. So if we say, for example, 2 plus 2 equals 4, we're saying that 2 plus 2 is the same as 4. But that's only in its very literal sense. When we're talking about equality in relation to people and how people relate to one another, then what we're talking about is not treating everybody the same because that would be unfair on people who are different for whatever reason. So it's about equal fairness, not sameness. And a key part of that then is it's about not being discriminated against. It's about not treating certain people badly because they are perceived to be different. Because again, I want to emphasize that point. It's not about everybody being the same, but everybody being on the same footing in the sense that people are treated with equal fairness, equal respect, and so on. So you got a taste there of um, half of, of, of one of the, the videos that we had specially produced. And um, below that, though, we you can also see that we found we've trolled the internet, we've trolled their different um, support organisations and YouTube channels to find uh, some really interesting third-party resources about, uh, particularly in this sense, about the social model of disability, which is so important to uh, the approach um, to uh, disability care uh, that is embodied in um, both in the role of the personal assistant and in the, um, the Health uh, and Wellbeing Act that's, that's um, come in in Wales recently. Um, <clears throat> so there are further third-party and original videos um, available in, in, each, uh, in each chapter and on page two of each chapter um, there is um, a conclusion uh, section which which overviews all of the content and then really interestingly some pause for thought questions so as a personal assistant is, is sitting um, down on the bus or in their tea break uh, um, or a, if they're on a, on a night they're sitting down and, and these are some questions that, that they can ask themselves um, each section has a, a, um, some resources that you can use to, to take your learning forward in, in this, in this um, case, it is uh, the Equality and Human Rights Commission and uh, some support organisations and, and some academic reading as well if people are, are interested in, in really going in-depth into the particular um, topic at hand. 
And then finally, and this is a bit of fun, but it's also to check your knowledge, uh, we have some interactive quizzes. Um, we showed one earlier. Uh, we we sent you towards one earlier, and uh, this is how they they work. If you if you didn't see that, um, they they Facebook quizzes you might be familiar with, um, and 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 they ask questions like choose one of the following, which best describes what is meant by the social model of disability, and hopefully we're we're all aware um, that um, the social um, the model of disability states that states that disability is caused by the way in which society is organized rather than a person's impairment and you get your your answer there and you can move on to the next question um we've got a few minutes left so i'm going to look at um the uh the additional sections first of all the you, the um your rights at work section where you will find um embedded directly within it um, loads of uh, knowing your rights uh, leaflets from the Wales TUC, um, as well as uh, a quick outline of um, your your uh, rights uh, as a personal assistant. Um, links to um, the union, the Unison Personal Assistance Support Network, and uh, and how you can get involved in the union as well. Um, but I'm going to focus in on the guide to further learning. Because I think it's really important that that we don't we're not we're not overselling this resource. Um, it 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 is a guidebook. It's an introduction. It's it's mapped to the accredited unit uh, introduction to working as a personal assistant in in social care, um, and therefore can be used as a resource on that on 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 that course. Um, but there are lots of other learning opportunities out there that we're really keen to signpost people towards. Obviously the PA Net uh, website, um, the um, the Ski Dignity and Care portal um, and the and the Care Council for Wales resources around the Social Services and Wellbeing Wales Act are really important ones as well. But where I want to take you to today um, is a website called Future Learn. Some people may have heard of this. Uh, it's an online MOOC, which is a massive open online course website. It's basically somewhere where you can go and learn from some of the the, um, the best institutions in the world. Uh, what a range of, of different subjects. They're not accredited courses, but they are um, produced by academic institutions um, using their resources, using their academics, and using all of their knowledge. Um, two courses that are on there right at the moment, which may be of, of great interest to um, to personal assistants who might be watching that, watching this. Um, the first one is compassionate care, getting it right, and the second one is working with disability. Um, so compassionate care, getting it right, from the University of Dundee. Um, this course starts um, on the 31st of October, so you've got some time to prepare for it. Uh, and is a five-week course uh, which takes around three hours a week. Um, these courses are fantastic. You can learn anything through future. You can learn computer programming, but you can also use it as a, as a learning development opportunity for um, for yourself in your job role. Uh, so so com compassionate care, getting it right, um, looks at the importance of compassionate care in health and social care, and how it's been um, brought to the fore by some of the public inquiries that, that Karen was talking about earlier. And the second resource is working with disability, the second course. This starts soon-ish on the 1st of October and um, addresses some of the same topics and some of the same issues that the Personal Assistance Online Guidebook does, but obviously this is a is a more structured course uh, where you are encouraged through the comment section on every page of the course to interact with the people who are running the course and the fellow learners. And these are people around the world. Um, I've taken part part in future learn courses myself and had interesting conversations on um, the use of social media in healthcare, which was the course I was doing 
um, with with people who are working in um, Malaysia, in Sub-Saharan Africa, in South America, in the United States, and um, across the rest of Europe. Uh, so it was really interesting to get different people's perspectives on the same issues. Um, so that's a fantastic learning resource that I wanted to highlight with you. We're now over our hour. I'm going to um, switch back to Karen, because I know I've overrun. Um, I'm going to stop sharing my screen. Screen, Karen, are you still there? You can, I'll try and unmute you. Let's stop sharing my screen, and I will. Karen, are you are you still with us? Karen, I can't hear you. Ah, okay, yeah. how's that? That's better. We're back, eh? Lovely. Okay. Uh, yeah, thanks, Richard, for taking us on that uh, tour of the uh, of the personal assistant online guidebook, um, and also to to help, I guess, to signpost to other resources that are available. Um, the next slide will show um, areas like the Open University, for example. Um, for those working in Wales, the Care Council, so you know, a wealth of resources that are available, um, as well as those described already by Richard. I suppose the only thing now for us to do is to sort of wrap up and summarise, really. Um, if you do want to review a recording of this webinar, Richard has very kindly posted a link there and uh, another QR code, and that's on the top left. Um, or you may prefer to, to view the presentation slides and uh, the same applies at the bottom, there's a hyperlink and also um, the green QR code. Um, I suppose the main message to take away from today really is that uh, personal assistants are uh, vitally important uh, to the care sector. It's uh, expected to be a massive growth area over the next few years. So, um, you know, the, the workforce uh, will expand. Uh, but as a workforce, you to be aware of your uh, rights as employees, uh, but also to be mindful of the uh, learning and development that uh, you might require. And I hope that this session has, has at least given you a few ideas of where to start looking, uh, and also, more importantly, to to use the resource, the, the personal assistant online guidebook, as a starting point. Um, I don't know if there's anything you want to add to that, Richard. Um, no, uh, thank you very much, Karen. And I, all I would add is thank you, Sharon, for your for your input uh, today and for taking mm -hmm. part, and to um, everyone who uh, is both viewing this live and viewing the recording. Please do add your learning needs to our Padlet board. Um, Please do share this video. Um, please do send it on to um, anyone who you know who either works as a personal assistant or supports those who work as personal assistants through a um, local authority or through a trade union or through um, a learning organization like um, the Workers' Educational Association. Um, please feel free to contact myself. Um, uh, and, and you can um, find us on Twitter, DigiSkills Cymru. It's a really good one, way of getting hold of me. Um, and we'd be really interested in talking to people who, who would like to use the resource maybe outside of, of Wales or within. So, uh, yeah, so thank you very much for listening. Yeah, thanks. Thank okay. you. <laughs> okay, well, we'll sign off now. Uh, have a lovely rest of uh, this this Friday and um, enjoy the weekend. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Bye.